which one is better? The iPhone or this Google Pixel thing that runs Android? So if you're currently using an iPhone and asking yourself that same question of, is Android better than the iPhone? Well, like everyday dad says, let's find out. Hi, welcome. My name is Pete Matheson. And from the outside, I'm pretty much what looks like a typical Apple fanboy. Now that's not 100% true, but it's not far off. If you are new around here and this is your first time watching, then hey, thank you. And stick around if you want more videos around tech, money, business stuff by clicking that subscribe button down below. Whilst I don't really feel like an Apple fanboy, I have definitely bought into the whole ecosystem. The fact I can pick up any device and have my, my documents, messages, photos, settings, and even things like a seamless audio switching between devices when I put down one and pick up another, or the out of the box global copy and paste, which lets you copy some text on, say, your desktop computer, and then paste it onto your mobile phone. Those features, put them together, are just fantastic. But for me, it has got to the stage where I'm so deeply and significantly financially invested into the Apple ecosystem that it, it kind of makes me question whether there are other things out there that perhaps could be better. But 2021, we're in a new year. We're all locked up at home. We can't go out. We can't do anything. I've sold my business. Life is just totally different. So I did a thing. I ordered this, the Google Pixel 4a, which I'll link down below. It's not really a flagship phone by, by any stretch. Yeah, not really. But this is an affordable entry level phone for me into the world of non Apple. I've now been using this for a couple of weeks now as my, my daily driver. And I wanted to give you my thoughts from the perspective of someone who's been using only Apple for literally the last decade. Firstly, a quick bit of background and a, a bit of perspective. I generally have a very eclectic taste for, for anything. I like to try different things. I, I'm not the type of person who will just stick with something for convenience. Just ask my wife, though that actually comes off kind of wrong. Hopefully she'll understand. I change things so often it's unreal. I, I always want to make things better. So if there's something out there that can do something better than the one I've got, then I want it. This still really isn't painting a good picture for my wife really, is it? Anywho. I've used Windows and Mac for the last decade. I still have a Windows PC right here underneath the desk, which I use sometimes. Personal opinion, but I prefer Mac over PC. But there's a whole other argument that I just won't start just now. I'm sure I've already got the Android police and uh, Apple police uh, after me after this uh, after this video anyway. But with Apple, I pretty much have every device that they've ever made. And I mean, literally every single device. And if you want to see me talk about all of their latest every single devices, then you can check out a few videos, which will be linked to you up here and down below for all of their new M1 range of Macs, which I will say, are awesome. Let's get straight into my thoughts, my likes, and my don't likes about switching to Android. Now, first up is notifications, and I absolutely love the fact that you can customize notifications to the point that you just can't get and just isn't possible on iOS. Using WhatsApp, for example, you can go in and configure group notifications, messages, alerts, media, and, and pretty much anything you can do within WhatsApp. And then going back to Instagram, you can pretty much enable and disable alerts for like everything that you can do within Instagram, which is just incredible. And I genuinely, genuinely do love this feature as it's such a distraction with all of the notifications you get today and, and that I'm definitely somebody who will go in and customize like everything and switch off all the unnecessary notifications. A really silly feature as well, but I genuinely love the animated backgrounds too. It was a, a friend of mine told me to download this app called Better, B-E-T-T-A, which comes with a free background of this like fish swimming around. I'll be honest, it, it just looks stunning. It doesn't seem to degrade the battery life or, or anything along those lines. So, um, and speaking of the screen, that always on display. There's been zero reaching out for my phone and, and tapping the screen just to check the time or, or check notifications because it is just always right there for you, like always on without any noticeable effects on battery life. And it, it is great. It is genuinely great, though I would quite like to customize it a little bit more, but it seems maybe that's like a Pixel 4a limitation, but, um, but that is just an incredible feature. And I guess that brings me on to the next one, customization. The sheer amount of customization you can do on Android is almost limitless. And I haven't really gotten into it yet just because I wanted to test out like the stock software as it came. Whatever I come up against, whether it's a dislike or a slight niggle with the software, the answer has always been, well, you can fix that by installing whatever this is or, or configuring it or, or doing something. There's like, there's always a fix. Other niggles that I've also experienced is um, a pretty slow and like sluggish camera in comparison. But again, 
probably hardware, so I can't really complain about that, really. There's no quick ability to get the torch, which on the iPhone is conveniently like, down here on the lock screen. But again, probably something you can fix by just downloading some software for it. I also struggle with something I often used on the iPhone, which was tapping right at the top of the screen to scroll your way back up to the top of the page. It works in like pretty much every app. But then on the Android side, I've noticed that the apps seem to have it baked into the app itself rather than being at the OS level. On Facebook, for example, you tap the home button, which is now at the top of the screen rather than the bottom of the screen on the iPhone. On Instagram, you again tap the logo, which then scrolls to the top. On Google Chrome's browser, there isn't any way to jump to the top of the page. And, and actually, even after some Googling, it doesn't really seem that this is a feature which can be added or, or fixed anyway, which is just a, a bit of a shame. Now, swiping in from the edges also gave me different results in different apps. On the iPhone, it lets you swipe like, in and out of menus, say, for example, for in YouTube Studio, swipe in from the left, and you get to see some menu options. Whereas on Android, you go into the same app, and sometimes it will kind of bring the menu out. Sometimes it goes back to the home screen. Sometimes it's like a page back button, so it goes to like the previous page. It just doesn't seem to be consistent, which is just weird. Now, I would also love, absolutely love to comment on the voice assistants too, but if you use Google for Business, so either G Suite or, or Workspace, then it seems you have to apply for a beta program to unlock like most of the voice assistant features. And then you also have to then complete a second form for some reason, a personal bugbear of mine. It asks you what version of G Suite licenses you're using. And it doesn't even have Google Workspace licenses named. Kind of hard to keep up when you keep changing the name of your products, eh? And well, I filled out both of these forms and I've yet to hear anything back. So um, yeah, that's just, I mean, that's a hard pass from me. Next would be the whole Face ID versus fingerprint debate, but but again, that's all hardware related. And in some cases, I actually found the fingerprint so much easier because when you, you know, wear a mask, <laughs> there's a phrase you never thought you'd be saying. And then my last issue, so to speak, is that the audio doesn't go very loud on the Pixel compared to the iPhone. But again, 350, 1500. Then I guess the only real issue that I've experienced is, is when I go to pick up my iPhone now and, hey, hello? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you remember when like phablets was a thing? I mean, this thing is a phablet for sure. But other than all of those comments, most of which to be honest can be fixed by software or by buying a better phone, I don't really have any complaints. It certainly takes some time to get used to the interface, yes. But I would think that most people could just pick up one of these things, follow the prompts when you first switch it on and then just be away with it. If you want to customize, then yes, you can. But if not, then the stock experience out of the box is still pretty great. So where does this really leave us? Well, I have to say, begrudgingly, I am very, very imp I always had this impression that Android phones were like slow and buggy and, and nowhere near the quality or standard of the iPhones. I said, it does open up a lot of questions to me of like, yeah, how does the Apple uh, watch compare to the Android watch? So I think I might need to rerun this test somehow. I don't know if I can maybe grab like a flagship Android phone, maybe the new Samsung Galaxy S21, along with the watch and maybe like the earbuds to see how the whole experience works. So if anybody is watching who has a S21 a watch and earbuds, let me know. But for me, there are still some challenges around messaging mainly, which I hope apps like Beeper will resolve. I have been on the lookout for like for one app that can hold all of my messages from the likes of you know Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and, and WhatsApp and any other app where people just message you. I just want one app to log into and use that ties all of those things together because that is by far one of the biggest challenges for most iPhone users. What do you do with iMessage? It's built into every Apple device. It works super well. Again, it integrates with, with like everything. So how do you change? Most people in Android world will tell you to use WhatsApp, which in itself is a great messaging app. You can chat with people just like iMessage. You can even do audio and video calls straight from the app there too. And one thing I do kind of love secretly is that you can add custom keyboards into Android, which means you can get quick access to like all sorts of things, but mainly GIFs, because I'm the kind of guy that will always send a GIF over text, and when I can send a GIF, I will. And yes, it is called GIF, but the love does stop right there, as there are currently some limitations that prevents me personally from using WhatsApp, and basically it just doesn't do multi-device support that well. Unlike iMessage, which just works direct to the cloud, WhatsApp actually works kind of like via your phone and talks to this WhatsApp web service thing. But when I go to work at my desktop or pick up my laptop, I have to then click to tell WhatsApp that now I'm using this device, which then completely locks you out of WhatsApp on the other device. Furthermore, there's no official iPad or Apple Watch apps, though there are third party apps. But again, I'm, I'm pretty security conscious about things and I'm not really sure that installing third party apps 
is really that great idea, you know, particularly with messaging apps, to be honest. Now, I know you could say most of the exact same things about iMessage because it doesn't work on anything other than Apple devices, which is true or rather kind of true because there was a brand new service that was announced very, very recently called Beeper. It's been announced by the former Pebble watch creator, Pebble Watch, remember those, um, which claim they can bring iMessage to Android. Though again, this is heavily caveated, but it's an interesting development to see how that pans out. But for me here, iMessage takes the win over WhatsApp. Though I do really like WhatsApp once you're in it, I just find the seamless ability to use iMessage across multiple devices like natively without having to install third-party apps just works better for me. Let's get on to some positives here. So um, I'll be honest with you, there is a lot of them. Yes, there is a lot of things that I like about this Pixel 4a and about Android in general. What did you say? And I'm gonna have to be careful here as I'm very, very aware that this is a flagship 1500 pound iPhone being compared to a 350 pounds, kind of like two year old phone, which is very, very difficult to compare because there's such a big difference in terms of the hardware. But, but bear with me, please bear with me. Who wins this whole Apple versus Android war of the worlds? Well, to be honest and truthful, I kind of think Android might win. What? For most people. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, of course, to like the video down below. Subscribe to the channel for more if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are posted. And I'll see you on Sunday, where, if I have my calendar right, I'm going to be comparing the base spec M1 MacBook Air to the top spec M1 MacBook Air. So, sub for that. See you soon and uh, bye bye. Just a message to my wife if you're watching this. I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean any of those things that I said. I love you lots.